I'm Jimmy Chang, and we're here to discuss how to multiply functions and radical numbers. Now, one of the things you want to consider is that radical numbers are kind of unique in that you can't really do too much when it comes to the radical numbers in terms of attach, in terms of adding them or subtracting them. And when you multiply and divide them, they have some properties for which there's not a whole lot to do, but that's not a bad thing for us. Here are a few illustrations. If you have a function, let's just say, of 3x plus 1, and you want to multiply by a radical number, let's just say square root of 2. If you're multiplying square root of 2 times 3x plus 1, for example, you don't really have much of a choice but to distribute and attach the 2. So for example, square root of 2 times 3x is really going to be 3 square root of 2x plus square root of 2 times 1 is going to be square root of 2. Same kind of idea if you have a function f of x is equal to 5x squared minus x. If you're going to multiply, let's just say, by cube root of 3 by this, again, you don't have much of an option but to attach them when you distribute. So cube root of 3 times 5x squared is 5 cube root of 3 x squared minus cube root of 3x. Now, the only th thing where you might be able to do a little more is if the terms inside the function have radicals in them. So for example, if you have a function f of x is equal to square root of 2x, then if you were to multiply square root of 3 by this, then square root of 3 times square root of 2 is going to be square root of 6 and you have square root of 6x. So the only time that you can really do anything beyond attaching them is if the terms themselves already have radicals in there, for which you might be able to consolidate further. So I'm Jimmy Chang, and that's a brief tutorial on multiplying functions and radical numbers.